Whenever I'm talking about tropical systems just starting to develop, there are a lot of variables that come into play, especially here in the Philippine Sea, where we do see rapid development from time to time. The number one question I've got over the last 24 hours, and I want to address this right off the bat, is basically, will it hit my house? And I get the concern. I 100% understand. But the number one thing you want to do is you want to look at the cone of air, and you want to keep in mind all the different variables and where this storm could develop. And not only the center line but the outflow the rainfall impacts that come from it as well so with that said i want you to keep that in mind as i get into today's update which of course is on tropical depression ombo and also i do want you to remember at the beginning of all my updates I always say the date today's date is the 11th heading into the 12th of may 2020 that's always important because the forecast does change from day to day. Tropical Depression Ombo located here towards the east of Mindanao, so it's slowly moving towards the north, and that's important to note because as we go ahead um, through the next 24 hours, it's going to continue to increase Coriolis force, and that is going to allow for this to also wrap up. Not to mention we do have some decent outflow off here towards the north, allowing this to gain some bigger lungs to breathe, and sea surface temperatures up here in the Philippine Sea are over 30 degrees Celsius so the one thing that really is working against this storm's development is the fact of shear that is working on it out here across northern Luzon and plenty of dry air there so you have these different factors in play but of course we want to take a look at the official track from tropical to perform tropical depression on both from Pagasa this does have landfall taking place as we go ahead through Wednesday into Thursday morning in northern Samar around the Bicol region also in southeastern Luzon before moving out there towards the well the NCR and I know this is pretty scary for a lot of people but by the time it gets there according to this particular model or is this particular forecast I should say not a model um it's going to be a tropical storm a lot of rain but you wouldn't see anything like damaging winds or storm surge based on the forecast at this time there are some models that are <clears throat> leading towards something much stronger developing but I'll get to that in just a second. Here's JMA. Uh, right now, it's a tropical depression, but if JMA does, or when JMA, I should say, upgrades this to a tropical storm, which I 100% expect they do, they will name it Vong Fong, which is a name from Macau, I do believe. It's not there yet, but that's the name that they're going to give it. The main point, likely a tropical storm at landfall. Um, could become a severe tropical storm. Yes, there is the possibility of a typhoon, and I, that's the quote-unquote, yes, it's possible, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's not, but uh, right now, everything in our forecast, as we look at our magical crystal ball of meteorology, says a tropical storm, maybe a weak, severe tropical storm. But the Philippine Sea is just the worst, because those sea surface temperatures there are baking. Models also have a, sometimes a hard time um, initializing in this area, because of a lack of data, especially off southeastern Mindanao. You don't have accurate Accurate. Um, we don't have hurricane hunters or something like that, which are very useful. And there's not a lot of flights through that area, which are also useful. Just an average commercial flights with ingest data. Smart to lose on, as I mentioned, possible landfall. And the rain, I think, is still going to be the main impact. So let's talk a little meteorology here, guys. Well, here's the upper level winds. And what we're seeing is, I mentioned earlier, that outflow towards the north and east. That is good for development. But see right in here, the winds kind of work into it. That is hindering the development on the northwestern portion of the storm and that's why on satellite imagery you have a lot of convection on the east but towards the west it is kind of pushed off a little bit that that's called upper level shear we have a lot of dry air in there and these are all things that are kind of working against that development coming out of it let's take a look at a few of the models as well now GFS and the ECMWF, I both kind of agree with the about the 72 to 96 hour forecast with this moving basically towards the north here. Coming on shore, as I mentioned, northern Samoa, Bicol region. Now, does it stay here and move out across northern Luzon or does it move towards the west? As I mentioned earlier, you want to pay attention to the cone of air. Pagasa has their cone of air something like this. So 
There's a lot of different factors that could even come into play here. ECMWF, also very similar forecast as we go ahead through the course of the next 96 hours with this coming onshore around Bicol. Actually, they kind of lean more so towards the west, moving this onshore into the Manila area, bringing a lot of rainfall with it. So basically, my suggestion, everybody in this area, that is a few million people. So I'm sorry it's so vague, so big right now. But uh, I, I suggest continue to monitoring this, but especially people in here. Because, yeah, I, I'm pretty confident at this time you're going to see a landfall in that area. That's why I really put that uh, in the main point. So rainfall, I mean, 1 to 200, maybe even nearly 300 millimeters of precipitation out here. That's why I keep on saying the rain is going to be the main impact because that is a lot of rain. I know you need it, but that's a lot of rain. Too much rain in a short period of time could lead to some pretty significant flooding. So you, you really want to keep that in mind as we watch this forecast, especially those living in low-lying areas, areas that are prone to flooding, or even areas located in some mountainous terrain, steeper elevations that could lead to the threat of landslides. All right, the next model I'm going to show you here. And uh, thanks for everybody who's continuing to watch all the way through here. I'm going to weed out some of the people by talking a little bit about my website. If you're not interested in extensive meteorology right now you could tune out i basically i've already kind of shared my information as far as where i expect this to go right now and what the main impacts will be also do want to remind you typhoon.ph i'm so happy i was able to pick up this url this dot ph website um yeah I'm, I'm posting there daily and i'm going to try to get some other people on there to post daily as well information on the system plus there's plenty of other stuff plus uh on here if you do want to go check out the useful link, Specific Typhoon Seasons, a great Facebook page that also has plenty of good information. All right, so let's talk about this model. <laughs> I'm going to kick myself for sharing this with you guys, but this particular model is called the HWRF. Oh, first, before I get to that, model consensus, I did toss this in there from typhoon2000.ph. Just kind of shows you the different models and the big threshold that we have here from west to east and really kind of lines up with that cone of air hwrf is notorious for overdoing intensities and this actually develops this storm into a full-blown typhoon do i expect that to happen no but it, the model is showing it and i just want to share that with you guys because it's pretty interesting um one and, and for those of you who really like to watch the models and really like the forecast um maybe people that are just learning how meteorology and i know there's a bunch of people that like that that watch these videos you want to remember that where this is initializing as i mentioned earlier there is a lot of limited data and we don't have recon there's not a lot of commercial flights through the area so sometimes these models they pick it up and and if there's one factor that is overdoing it like the butterfly effect this model might ingest that and it compel compounds it and it's just a runaway effect and uh, a reverse feedback loop and basically just means sometimes it just gets carried away I prefer the ECMW off and the GFS. They just have a little bit lower resolution, but that feedback loop doesn't get into this as much as the HWRF. HWRF, if you have recon close to land in an area that has a lot of commercial flights, places that just have more better or better initializing data are great. But this model I, I'm not going to rule it out. Hey, HWRF has done things in the past that I found interesting, and sometimes it's caught stuff, but uh, I really at this time, I'm not terribly uh, jumping all over it. Anyways, that is all I want to talk about today, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know in the comment box below. If you watched all the way through this video, which now I am on nine minutes, whew, I just love the ramble and talk. Let me know in the comment box. You are a legend if you watched all the way through because that, especially on YouTube, is one of the big things. So I uh, really appreciate it. And yeah, you can just hit that like button or share this out. You know, all that good stuff, uh, all the generic stuff that you say at the end of videos. That dry air really is hindering this, though. And I'm just marking it because this is something I really want to watch out for. Um, I think that's going to keep this kind of a tropical storm, a severe tropical storm. That's the big thing. And like I said, big takeaway, uh, call region. <laughs> Probably you're going to get it. Yeah. All right, guys. Stay safe out there. As always, thanks for watching. Hi.